Hey everyone, this is Dan Thompson with Wise Money Tools. Has this been a crazy week in the stock market or what? Did you hear about the company GameStop? Well, this has been just madness <laughs> all week long. It's also really kind of cool because it's a David and Goliath story at its finest. In this case, Goliath being the large hedge funds and David being a bunch of small investors. It's reported that one hedge fund called Melvin Capital lost more than 50% of its assets just in a few days. So what they did is they made this big bet, at least as of right now, they've lost big time as well. So how'd this all go down? It all started with Melvin Capital. They looked at GameStop and came to the determination that this company was doomed. They saw it becoming basically worthless, so they did what was called short the stock. What that really means is this. To make a complete trade, you would buy a stock, and then at some point, you sell the stock. That's a full circle trade. However, on Wall Street, it doesn't matter which one you do first. In other words, you can sell the stock first, and then at some point, buy the stock back. Either way, it's a completed trade when you buy and sell or sell and buy. When you short a stock, what you're essentially doing is borrowing stock from another stockholder who's not interested in selling at this time, and you sell their stock. Then at some point, you have to buy that stock back and replace it. So let's suppose XYZ stock is selling for $10 a share, and I think it's on its way down to five. Since I don't own any shares, I can actually borrow the shares from the brokerage firm. Let's say I borrow 100 shares to sell. So now I sold XYZ stock. I don't have any shares to replace it, so I'm short the stock. Now I have 100 times $10 a share, or in this case, $1,000 in my cash account. But unfortunately, I can't go spend it. The brokerage firm knows that it's not quite my money yet, not until I replace the stock. My cash position has a ledger that basically offsets the cash by the current stock price of XYZ, knowing I've got to buy it back at some point. So the brokerage firm isn't going to let me take all my money and run. Now suppose I was right and the stock fell from $10 to $5. Now I can turn around and buy that stock for $5 and replace those borrowed shares. I replaced 100 shares of stock. It cost me $500. Since I had $1,000 in my account and I'm fully closed out of the position, now I've got a profit, a $500 profit. So I essentially made $500 by selling the stock first, and then when it went down in price, I bought it back and replaced it at a lower price. This is selling short. So what is the risk of selling short? Well, technically, the risk is an infinite risk because if the stock keeps going up, at some point, I'm gonna to have to buy that stock back to replace it. If in our example, the stock went from $10 to $15, and remember I sold it at 10, now I have to buy it back at 15, which means I lose $500. That's essentially a 50% loss. But the reason that it could be an infinite loss is because the stock could go up to a million or even a trillion. Well, maybe that's not likely, but you get the idea. There's no cap on how high a stock price could climb. Okay, so what happened with GameStop stock? <laughs> Melvin Capital, some other hedge fund big boys, thought that they could make a bundle on GameStop by, going, by having it go down and literally become worthless, maybe even bankrupt completely. So they sold short millions of dollars of GameStop. Then they did what I think is pretty dirty. Now let me say, I love capitalism. I love free markets, but I do not like crony capitalism. I don't like market manipulation or anything that makes it an unfair playing field. To me, that's not capitalism. I think free and fair markets are capitalism. Well, we've seen billionaires over the years take down other countries' currencies and destroy them all just for their gain. To me, that's kind of criminal. And again, it's not what I would call capitalism. Selling short is also not typically a dirty game. It can be dangerous, as I just explained, and in particularly, 
I don't really like betting on a company going down and losing money in order for me to make money, so I'm not one to do a lot of shorting. Okay then, what's the dirty part? Well, once these hedge funds shorted the stock, then they started putting out all these opinions and press releases on how bad GameStop is and that the stock's gonna go under, essentially nearly creating a self-fulfilled prophecy hoping to urge the stock lower and lower and getting people panicking to sell. The idea being if they got out enough bad news, it may cause sellers to sell and put the stock in a downward tailspin. That to me is kind of dirty. If you want a shorter stock, go ahead, but then let things take their course ethically. But when you essentially try to force a company out of business, that to me is dirty play. Anyway, Here's where David comes in. In other words, here's where all our little investors come in. The website Reddit has a blog post called Wall Street Bets that essentially got wind of all this. They have millions of readers and they're also gamers too. So they were familiar with GameStop. Well, they went into combat mode, if you will, and put out posts encouraging their millions of readers to buy GameStop and drive the price up. Well, guess what? For the first time that I've seen in history, and I've been doing this 36 years, they did it. It worked. Now, keep in mind, this stock has been trading right around $5 a share pretty much through all of 2020. And many analysts were wondering where this stock would really be going anyway. In December of 2020, the stock started climbing. It got to around $15 or $16 a share. This presumably was based on some good news that of its future plans, and they added three new directors. One was the co-founder, Ryan Cohen of Chewy. By early January, this stock was trading around $17, $18 a share. That was a pretty big move in and of itself from five to say 18. Well, that's when it appears that the short trading started. So what they did is these big hedge funds sold or shorted the shares at 18 as an example, and then they wanted to drive that price back down to five or lower if they could and make a lot of money in a short period of time. The problem is our hero David <laughs> and the millions of small investors bought and bought and bought and bought GameStop stock. It's hard to say, GameStop stock. <laughs> and they drove that price up as high as $469, which hit on January 28th. Now, I've been doing this, like I say, for a long time. I've never seen anything like it. A company presumably worth somewhere between five and $20 a share gets so much attention, so many purchases, that it soars to 469 bucks. Can you imagine? You just shorted the stock at 18. At some point, remember, you've got to replace that stock that you borrowed to sell first, which means when it hit $469 per share, you would have lost $451 a share. Now, the brokerage companies don't like that, and they're probably never going to let that kind of an outstanding balance occur. When a brokerage firm looks at your cash and other stocks and assets and realizes you can't cover your losses, you get what's called a margin call, which means you have to close out your position and cover your losses. Well, eventually Melvin had to close out its position at $347.51 a share. Now, I read this comment about the loss. It said, correcting for synthetic longs leaves GameStop with about 58% of its float shorted. In other words, 58% of all the shares outstanding were shorted. At Wednesday's close of $347.51 a share, that put shorts down, in other words, those who shorted the market down $23.64 billion for the year. And just on that Wednesday alone, they were down $14.34 billion. Wow. Can you imagine on one day losing $14.34 billion dollars and a total of 23.64 billion just trading one company that you bet on and it went the wrong way. So David not only killed Goliath, but many of his friends too. 
This was an enormous victory for those fans of GameStop and those fans who don't like it when there's dirty pool played in the markets. Okay, now some reality check. Is GameStop worth $450 a share or $300 a share or even $200 a share? I mean, it's been at $5 for a long, long time and nothing really has changed fundamentally. It did get to up to 18 on some good news and a direction that might turn the company around. But the market, left alone, has a way of finding an intrinsic value. In other words, kind of what the stock is really worth. But still, $400 plus dollars a share? Probably not likely. What's most likely going to happen is that GameStop will find its intrinsic value at some point in the future. That may be $5 or $15 or $25, who knows. Some of the early buyers of GameStop also made a boatload of money too. I mean, if you were one of the early ones who jumped in at 18 or 19 or 20 and wrote it up to 460, that's incredible. I mean, if you bought 1,000 shares at 15, it would have cost you $15,000. And at its peak, had you got out just right, you'd had $469,000. Now, I doubt there were many who experienced that perfect gain but still, I'd say there were a lot of winners on that one. Even if you only clipped 100 points on this volatile ride, you had a really, really good week. And the losers in all this were the hedge funds. For those who literally fought back and beat the big boys at their own game, it was a massive victory. No doubt there are gonna be lawsuits coming and the hedge funds are gonna complain and make their case, but I hope in the end, after getting a taste of their own medicine, that true capitalism and free markets prevail again. I'm not gonna get into the potential scandal involving Robinhood, which is a brokerage firm that essentially halted trading on the stock because that's a different story within and itself, and I think the SEC is gonna to have to figure that one out. But suffice it to say that there are some that think Robinhood should be closed down for good for halting and limiting trading during those few days. The ironic thing is this, Robinhood is a low to no cost brokerage firm that's supposed to be for the little guy, but it appears they were playing for the big hedge funds and protecting them and the little guy may have gotten the shaft. Robinhood is made so that the small investor can buy fractional shares and that's always been kind of a good thing, but I'm not sure how that's gonna turn out for them in the end. Once again, I love free markets and unless Robinhood has a very good reason, there's probably going to be some consequences for what they did. We'll see how it all turns out. I don't want any manipulated markets, yet I'm not naive enough to realize it happens all the time. But maybe this lesson will make others think twice before they play that game. It was interesting to say the least. Now to sum this up, this is not investing, okay? This is speculation at best and essentially gambling. There were no numbers or revenue or any kind of uh, fundamentals that could justify a price of $469 valuation. This is what is often referred to as the greater fool theory. You buy at a price and hope there's a greater fool to pay more than you did. Sooner or later, a fool is made known. Someone bought GameStop at $469 and never saw a penny of profit. But according to today's price, has lost over 50% of their money so far unless they sold out sooner. Who knows where it's going to stop? Just today, it dropped from $315 a share to $225 a share, nearly 100 points or about 71% in one day. There was no greater fool than those who bought at $469. Moral of the story is speculation is not a game for the faint of heart. There are easier and more predictable ways to build your wealth, long term and without all the risk. Real investment strategies are what build sustainable long term wealth and income. Wall Street can be a gamble for sure and be very unpredictable. You never know what's going to trigger a sell off. I've been through too many of them. It's really no fun. There are much better ways, more predictable, safer, and oftentimes with greater returns and tax advantages. So take advantage of our strategy session. Just click on the time trade link below and we'll talk about your situation. 
Don't forget to subscribe, and if you have any questions, shoot them to questions at wisemoneytools.com, and we'll answer them just as quick as we can. Until next week, take care.